<laughs> I'm so so sorry. The link the link wouldn't work for me to paste it over. And I'm now on my phone rather than the laptop. But oh, hi. <laughs> Hello. Thank goodness you're here. <laughs> I'm happy. Oh, I was sitting there furiously typing away going, I'm speaking, but I'm typing to Marianne as well. <laughs> Where's your Christmas jumper? Yeah. I completely forgot we said, oh, I love that one. I completely <laughs> forgot. I was so concentrating on the, right, I'm going live and I need to have the laptop and I need to have the tripod and I need to have all my chargers and I need to remember my microphone. And it turns out I forgot the tripod, I forgot the Christmas jumper and I forgot the Christmas hat. <laughs> it's going to happen, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Hi so, to everyone who's with us. Thanks for joining us. I'm sorry I'm late. <laughs> no, I'm so pleased you're here and we've got so many people saying hello and I'm so glad you've managed to follow us over to this one because to be honest, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. So <laughs> <laughs> well, we were the same we were the same this end because obviously we've set it up before to enable us to go live like we did last yeah. time, but we've never actually joined the live stream. See, so there. to do it. Yeah, so to do it that way round, we had no clue. So Mr. Wallflowers is spuriously working in the background to get us uploaded onto the laptop so we can cross over for a better view. Because <laughs> at the moment, I've got um, chats, conversation coming up, and then I can't see yourself. Well, of course, I like to see your face when we're talking. Yeah, you know what my face is like. What can I say? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, to everyone who's who's putting this because in case you haven't seen i mean this is obviously the first time i've hosted a live and basically on my mobile it needs to go the uppy downy way and all your chats come up in black across the screen going you know like going up and down the screen so if you see me going like this this is me trying to read them so just now I've got my, um, and then every so often it clears so that yeah, you can see yeah. what's happening. Oh, you're back. Oh, hang on. Michelle, Jan, I'm on it, Chatterbox, Paul, Suki, Michelle, and Mary. <sighs> just made it by the time it started going off. So thank you so much for being here, Mary Ann, on my own channel. Woo! For <laughs> like, oh my goodness. I feel so special. <laughs> <laughs> so if anyone watched my video today, I was talking about how I was thinking about, oh, no, I need to actually plan for Christmas. I am not doing the same as we've done for the last 20 years. I'm actually doing different. And I have very little actually, you know, I'm so proud of myself. I have the turkey. I have the roast potatoes. I have the roasted veg. You're a lot more further on than I am, love. Yeah, then you, you asked about stuffing. You said about stuffing. I was like, I don't know how to do stuffing. I've never done it. I have a, I have a box of packs of stuffing. I have never used it in my life. I do not know how to use it, so I'll need to go and read the instructions. So for people who don't know, I commented on um, Karen's stream um, earlier today when she did that video. Um, and she was asking about what extras to put with the meal and what kind of starter to have with the meal and what kind of dessert to do with the meal. Because, of course, we've all had Christmas dinner with family. Um, and when you actually begin to do them yourself, it, as Karen said, you've got the freedom then to choose what starter you may have or what dessert you may have. Because basically a Christmas dinner is a Christmas dinner. It's a glorified roast dinner, isn't it? Basically what we have on a Sunday. So the only extras are what trimmings you may put. Um, so for the Americans here with us today, what dressings um, you have with the meal. So we call it stuff and Americans call it dressing, uh, dressing. So um, I, w I was saying to Karen earlier, um, my family really enjoy dressing stuffing. Um, and we've been fortunate in the past to buy chestnut stuffing, cranberry stuffing, whatever it may be. And we've had some really luxurious stuffings in the past, you know. And the boys always comment on it. 
I love the stuff from mum. Did you make it? You know, and a couple of times I'll slowly go, yes, do you like it? <laughs> <laughs> As we all have done over the years, you know. Um, and this year, obviously, things are... As one lady says, we've got to make a penny squeak. You know, we really have to. Um, so unless I can actually get in my position, unless I can actually get a nice stuffing from one of the pantries or the food initiatives where I shop, um, I'm then going to be left with a generic cheap stuffing packet, uh, which I have a few of those in the pantry because we don't mind them on a normal Sunday dinner. I like a moist stuffing, a moist dressing, um, and just your, your cheap generic one does us. So what I did later later this afternoon after I'd done that comment on, on your video, Karen, I actually took a quick search on some of the um, YouTube videos of how to make stuffing. And I come across a couple of videos of how to um, soup up kind of thing on a cheap a cheap um, stuffing dressing. Like we yeah. normally get a box of Paxo or something, wouldn't we? That's the brand name we're familiar with. Yeah. Um, so I looked at a video and basically if you have the finances to add some pancetta to it or some bacon cut ends to it, fry that in a frying pan. <coughs> excuse me, um, an onion, dice that, fry that in the frying pan in the baking fat um, and a stick of celery and then mix the, the stuffing or the dressing up from the box as you normally would in a bowl. Add your fried vegetables to it, stir mm -hmm. it all together and then place in the oven for, for no longer than 10 minutes with a tiny little bit of stock added to it to keep it moist. Because, of course, some people like dried balls or dried stuffing, you know. Uh, and with the condition my teeth's in, that's just no good for me. So I really enjoy a moist stuffing. Yeah. Um, just let me give a few shout-outs. We've got Patsy there. We've got Watts for Tea, which was the top two. that They've gone away again. Here's the thing. <laughs> yep. I've got Sheila and Kate and Dead Boy Jonathan. Good evening, and Patsy. Um, just with you talking about your teeth there, poor Patrick, bit in a chocolate biscuit. Mm -hmm. We might have to be changing what we're eating for Christmas dinner because he's pretty sure he's broken a tooth. Wow! Oh, that's even worse. So yeah, this could be fun. <laughs> is he in pain? Is he in pain, or is it just literally broken off and he's pain free? Seemingly, it's just wobbly and pain free at the moment. We'll see. So we're just going to ignore it for now until I need to panic, and then once I need to panic, I'll be fine. Um, yeah. But yeah, as you say, I mean that's how to, to updress the stuffing. I'm looking for something different for starters. Can and I then... just share a tip with Patrick just before we oh. move on? Um, yeah. Recently, from one lady's video, um, "Love and Life on Less," they um, told me something I'd never heard before. If you have dental pain, normally we'd uh -huh. reach for the clove oil, wouldn't we, if we have it? Um, put a dab on that to kill the pain. Apparently, a used tea bag does basically the same thing. Oh, and you can just place it on the You can place it on the gum near. And if you haven't got the finances to pay £10 or whatever for a, a little bottle of clove oil, you can use a used tea bag. Obviously, neither are going to be really pleasant, but at least the tea bag only tastes of tea. Exactly. No, we quite like that one. So that's you told. Tea bags, as I say, of which we have plenty because we both drink so much tea. Yeah, it's just an extra <laughs> use. Yeah. <coughs> um, yeah, but I was doing, when I was looking at the starters, and a whole, an awful lot of the starters are seafood based, I find. Yeah, yeah. And not everybody likes seafood. Yeah. I'm not a big seafood fan. But then, can I just mention, I saw Frugal Queen in France channel and she did the stuffed mushrooms. While she mentioned Frugal Queen of France, she actually gave me a shout out on her page um, in the community tab and actually promoted the Wallflowers channel. So anyone who came over from... Um, Hopefully I haven't got this wrong, but I do believe her name's Jane. Um, I thank you so much for coming over. And yes, she does some excellent videos, Karen, yeah. Well, she just did the, the, the um, stuffed mushrooms. 
And she said, I've got the patty here. And I was like, uh huh. And she said, then I've got the cheese. I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> cheese stuffed mushrooms. Hmm. Could I have that as a starter? Oh, absolutely, I can. Yeah, yeah. So that is called a blend starter. Um, and then someone um, this morning put on about a really good idea, actually, and said, you've got people from all over the world on this channel. Why don't you do a different course from a different place? So I'm thinking, well, do you know, Jane gave me this regal queen and trans mushroom, and this lady was from Australia, and she suggested pavlova. Very nice. I distinctly remember having pavlova when I was a kid. Although I haven't mentioned this to Patrick so far, but he's not throwing me dirty looks or anything. Pavlova for Christmas dessert. You know the one with the meringue and the like three foot of cream on the top? Well, if I make it, it's going to have three foot of cream on the top. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Uh-huh. <laughs> in the middle to flavour it. So, yes, I'm thinking that that would be good. Oh, Sheila, smoked cheese on mushrooms. Oh, because I need to get special cheese because all I've basically got is the um, like the cheddar for making my toasties. And I was thinking, oh, I could have some mozzarella or whatever. Smoked is a really good plan. Decluttering Queens, thank you for that. Um, wishing you well, Patrick and Hansi. So there you go. Um, but yeah, so yeah, that's no, my it's, it's really nice um, to be able to have that. But of course, on my kind of budget, um, some mozzarella would be absolutely fabulous. Um, and what we call plastic cheese, even if that that's where your where your budget is, anything that's a, a, a melted texture on top, um, and you don't have to stretch to pate if it's if it's a smaller budget you're working with. Those salmon paste jars that we all uh-huh. used to know and love for for work sandwiches, etc. Um, a spoonful of one of those in the mushroom stuffed in would be just as good, you know. So just so we've got a varied budget there for, for different budgets, yeah. you know, it's still possible to have that tasty meal on a much lesser budget too. Oh, absolutely. Now, wait a minute. I'm waiting on this chat coming back up because someone else has suggested doing something that confuses the earth out of me. Baked brie with nuts and jam on top wrapped in pastry. That was well, Tanet. Tanet, I have to say, the baked brie, I'm not particularly bothered about. Um, but she, funnily enough, we were talking about that at work. And I, like, was, I like camembert. I love camembert. Okay, see, I'm not that big a cheese, but they were saying they will have a cheese and jam toasty. Yeah, it works. Yeah. I swear, Mandy and I looked at them and go, what? What are you on about cheese and jam? Um, but seemingly, cheese and jam. On a well, sorry, just, just on an off shoes. We all look at other new damfangled um, things that people have for the taste. I mean, at first, we would never have thought of peanut and jelly. We would never have thought of cheese and jam. But the rest of the world, Karen, would never have thought of a fried Mars bar. Yeah, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> Because, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, as a sense of humour, that, that's only something that they did in Scotland originally, wasn't it? Yeah, pretty much. It's because it's cold here. And it's horrible and it rains. And sometimes if you come out of a night out or if you just don't want to cook and you go and it's just deep fried and hot and it's got that mouthfeel and it's just not. What just explain fully what it is, Karen, for those that don't know. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I never actually thought of that. Okay, so here in Scotland, we have this dish that someone made as a joke at a fish and chips shop. But actually, it's really, really nice. And what you do is you get a Mars bar, the chocolate bar, which is... They're the, Mars the, bars the, everywhere, I think, aren't they? I think they are, yeah. And what you do is you dip it in batter, and then you deep fry it. So really, as a calorie stack, you probably couldn't do it any better if you tried. With the chocolate, the glucose, the toffee, all dipped in batter, and then deep fried. Oh, Patsy, fried pizza. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so I will come back to that. So basically, a deep fried Mars bar is a Mars bar in batter thrown in the deep fryer, and it is lush. The other thing, as Patsy has just reminded me, and I don't think it's really everywhere because just down from Patrick's is a chip shop. 
So sometimes as a wee treat, we'll send him down to the chip shop and I looked at the menu and I was like, I want a deep fried pizza. Sorry for interrupting again, just for our American uh, friends that are with us. Our chips are your French fries on a much thicker scale. So your chips are crisps. So when we call it a chip shop, it's not a crisp shop. It's um, French, thicker French fries where we have French fries and fish. Yeah, potato wedges sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, poor Patrick looked at me as if to say, because I think he was thinking Domino's pizza. And if you have a deep fried pizza here, it's not the Domino's pizzas. It's those really, really cheap doughy ones that you get in the likes of Walmart that have got a thin layer of tom- tomato paste. And then they've got the shredded cheese like stamped into it. And then you throw that in the fryer. What can I say? Um do you not put a coating on that, Karen? Do you literally just put the pizza in? Yeah. Because I'm not familiar with that. <laughs> oh, it's so yummy on a cold day. Um, someone's just asked, what are toasties? Toasties are like a sandwich that you put in a, like your George Foreman grill and you spread butter on the outsides and you put them in a George Foreman grill and they're really good on cold days. So, yeah, here in Scotland, we are really good at the, it's freezing cold, it's wet, because normally if we've got freezing cold, it's very wet. And we need comfort food, and we are really good at comfort food. (laughs) Has to be done. There's still still things that don't travel that, you know, I'm only in England here, you know, and it's within good travelling distance, you know, within an hour or so, I can be with yourself. How long? Two hours. How long for us to travel to Perth from here? Three and a half, four. Well, we're three and a half, four hours, sorry. Um, So we can jump in the van and be with you in four hours. So on the scale of other countries, that's not too far a distance, really, if you know what I mean. And to think that the the different food styles doesn't necessarily travel, it can stay within that region. And I'm not familiar with a with a deep fried pizza i've never okay, come across my, michael that. has just suggested try deep fried ice cream now that is a new mm-hmm. one of me and we're pretty good at deep frying everything up here see i thought <laughs> i thought it was strange when i heard of the the oven baked ice cream what's it called baked alaska oh yeah um and i always thought that was strange wouldn't it melt you know and different things like that but <laughs> Obviously, it's possible. Chefs do it daily, don't they? I was going to say, if baked Alaska works, then deep fried ice cream should work. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. It's strange. It's strange if you've not come across it, you know, to take the concept in. Definitely. Yeah, goodness, I haven't had baked Alaska for years. No, me. Yeah. I remember a friend um, trying to teach herself cooking skills. <laughs> And she tried it one time and it worked and, you know, we all loved it. But I must have been about 20 then, so a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm on it has just said that some state bears the deep fried butter. Now that I'm just not getting. Tell me that again. Some I'm on it says at some of the state fairs, they even deep fry butter. That confuses me. There must be a coating of some sort on it, mustn't there? It must be in batter or in something. Yeah, it must be something like that. See, but isn't it amazing how even, what well, you've been doing a YouTube channel longer than me, but for me, it's less than a year since I started posting regularly. And I have learned so many different foods and so many different suggestions and just learned so much just from comments and people, you know, suggesting things. And then you find someone and it's like, oh, they've got a channel, I'll go and look. And you go and learn stuff, you know. Um, We do. The interaction is amazing because it it leads to further conversation. It leads to us doing a little bit of research. and It's educating us along the way, isn't it? It's fabulous. Um, there's several times I've gone and thought, oh, what's that? You know, and, and looked into it a bit more. And then, as you say, discovering that other people have got channels because 
I could be a sub of yours like I was with Tessie's for a long, long time and not know that I've got a channel until yeah. all of a sudden you, you've got a communication between yourselves and you you know you've got a channel. There's so many groups out there. Um, as we know with the Christmas project we're all involved with, you know, we mightn't have necessarily known that those other people had channels. Yeah, completely. We're all just subs on each other's channels, aren't we? Exactly. And there's, um, who is it? Leanne on a hill in Oklahoma says, I learned Vix on my feet from you. And I'm like, yeah, that was Mandy's fault. Mandy told me to put Vix on my feet. And I put loads of Vix on my feet. And I was like, people have told me this for years. And I was just like, don't be so stupid. And oh my goodness, the difference it makes is ridiculous. What, it's instantly the next morning? I've not done it myself. I've seen it on videos. No, they're just like softened. Uh, but seriously, mm. if, if you're all bunged up and stuffed up with the cold, fix, lathered on your feet and then put on a pair of socks is absolutely fantastic. This time of year, that's valuable information, isn't it? Does oh, it have to be Vicks? Um, I don't know. I had Vicks. I had bought it a few months before. What I'm thinking is, would, would Vaseline it's work the same one. or is it the menthol part of it? I think it's probably the menthol part. Um, now, let me just check. I think Tanette was saying... Where's she gone? Tanette had said, um, could we get a link to Mandy's channel? Now, this is Mary Ann. Mary Ann is from Wallflowers UK. Um, you can get that on YouTube. Mandy is the lady with the long hair that I work with who cooks. And she doesn't have a channel yet, however. She shares to your channel frequently, doesn't she? Yeah. She she does the cooking on my <laughs> channel, and I think that she will be there. Yeah, right. Tanette, yeah, Marianne, Marianne is Wallflowers UK. Hi, Tanette. Um, if you go to Car Karen uh, Prime and Midlife, where we are now, if you go to Karen's community tab, um you should find a link to us there on the um the little promo we did asking everyone to come and join us tonight and you'll be able to link through from there to our channel and have us all connected we're all one big community um we'd like the subs to be across the board from uh, especially both our channels uh like because you are with that you're fine, you're fine we mention each other daily frequently um you know it, it is a big community and the more the merrier but man's a bag of cats <laughs> well women of a certain age love exactly <laughs> you know, it really is and you think you know since you and i started chatting and then you find out and you sort of Look at your failures and go, oh, my God, did you do that? And it's like, yeah, been there, done that. <laughs> oh, when we said Tessie, mobile home life. Is that your homestead, Tessie? She, that was her original page, I think, well, uh, mobile. Well, homestead Tessie, Hi, Tessie. Is, is on the chat. So great to see you there. Hi, Tessie. Meanwhile, they have Vix with lavender now. Oh, now that could be good. She digs at UK. Hello to you as well. Oh, gardening. More gardening. I hope you realise, by the way, Marianne, you are my gardening person. I can't I've wait to start in spring. Um, I've been you know, telling me exactly what to do and when to do it. Well, as I say, at, at the moment, um, make sure you're still building up your compost. Um do you have a compost bin? Yes. Do you just have one? Yes. I have a postage stamp, remember? I know postage you do. Stamp. What 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 size are you going to do pots or are you going to do a raised bed? I have two raised beds in my garden. Lovely. What kind of two. size are they? About six foot long by about two foot wide ish, I think. Yeah, that, that's really good, reasonable size, and you've got two of those. Yes, basically because my bestest friend in the whole wide world ever has turned into a really good gardener, and her husband made her raise beds. So I went all pouty like a five-year-old and went, I want one, I'll pay up if he makes me one. So she talked <laughs> him into making me two. 
Now, do those raised beds have soil in them? No, not yet. They've got a whole lot of wood in them up until two days ago when a very nice friendly person from work chopped up all my wood. <laughs> okay, so so from now, if you have anything coming cardboard through the post, um, no. anything like spare cardboard that you're trying to dispose of, do not throw it away. Lay them in big sheets, just a quick, I know it's cold, but a quick pop out, split it open, lay it in a sheet at the bottom of your raised bed and pile them up, all the waste that you've got of your cardboard and pile them up. Then when we come to spring, all your twiggery that you're cutting back from the dead stuff, you lay that on top of your cardboard. And as you're accumulating your compost throughout the winter, the winter months, all your kitchen waste, etc., um, you need to mix it. So as you're putting in a certain percentage of green waste, which uh -huh. is your, li your live kitchen waste, anything like that, you, you need a percentage of brown waste on top of it which is your cardboard, your newspapers, your egg cartons, your inner of your toilet roll if you're not using them for the fire, etc. So you're doing a turnabout layer. If you okay. have any soil to put a sprinkle on, put that on. In this weather, if your compost bin is open, the rain's wetting it, so you don't need to wet it. In the water months, you need a jug of water on it to keep it moist so it disintegrates. Um, but That's through the winter now, accumulate your compost it. to top your beds up, put your cardboard in and keep piling your cardboard between the two beds. In the spring, put your twiggery on, your, your, your oh, compost. Bye, Leanne. Thank you so much for being here. Bye, Leanne. Thank yeah, you. Well. And I think the biggest work you can do throughout the winter, because... We're not planting out in this. And if you haven't got a polytunnel or a greenhouse, you, you're not able to do much at all, really. I don't have either at the moment. Uh, I don't have any polytunnels, unfortunately. Mine were destroyed through the, the bad weather. Mm. Um, um, my greenhouse collapsed two years ago uh, with the big scale winds. Um, so I don't have either of them, but come early, early spring, I'll start doing seeds on the window ledges within the house. And because we're south faced and we'll get the heat of the sun. And I'll be growing them for two, two and a half months. And then as the weather warms, they shall then go out in the beds. But we'll talk about that step by step um, as in I'm when the period My comes. house is south facing as well. Excellent. Even getting door panels, apart from the dirty great big oak tree in the ex churchyard in front of me, that means I can't even get a sky dish. They told me that about 20 years ago when I first moved into the house. So as you can imagine, the oak tree has got bigger and bigger. Um, I can remember when I said to the guy about the solar panels. Um, oh, Raquel, hi. Nice to see you. Manisha as well. Um, but when I asked them about the solar panels, I was like, look, I do accept that there's this dirty great big oak tree. So if it's not going to be worth it, please tell me. And I got this lovely, positive, shiny, bright folder coming back that says, oh, you can do this. But of course, I'm in Scotland anyway, which is bad enough to then have an oak tree. And I said to them, can you please make sure that you take that into account? And, you know, I'm not stupid. I do know it's going to have an effect. And they completely ignored it. Not one word about it, not one word about anything. So I was like, do you know something? Ah, I'm not getting solar panels. And I have to say, at minus 10 that it was this week, how glad am I I got the wood burner instead? I don't use a lot of TV. Um, Mr. Wallflowers likes to watch the football and the sports, etc. cetera. Um, do you have a Cody stick? Excuse me while I check with my technical advisor. Fire stick. Fire stick we have. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that should basically void out a sky dish. Yeah, that's we can do that. But it was mainly because of the fact of, you know, 20 years ago, I knew I couldn't get a sky dish because of this oak tree. And the solar panel one, it's like, oh, no, it's fine. You can just do this. And they're like, no, I don't think you're good. No, 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 no. Salesman, babes. I don't mind a relatively strong salesperson if they actually take 
factors into consideration. You know, if they actually listen to you. Yeah, but to yeah. send me a full report of, oh, you can get this and you can get this. And I'm like, really? No, you're lying to <laughs> me, so I'm not, doing, I'm not speaking to you. Sign here and pay me a vast amount. Exactly. And sign here and pay me a vast amount that probably, even if it was in struggle, would be saving me something like a pound a week if I was lucky. For the rest of your life. <laughs> exactly, for the rest of my life. Whereas now I've got a wood burner that has probably saved me about £100 already. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Just bear with me. Can I just show you? Sorry, I'm not interrupting. Um, we've got we've we've bought, we've bought the new fandangled uh, microphone stand and a light. And Mr. Wallflowers is just about to set us up, so I'm not wobbling everywhere holding it with my hands. Mm -hmm. but I'll, just, I'll just show you. This is the microphone. Oh, very um, cool. This is the stand. I don't know if you can see it very well. Yeah. Um, so he's just about to take the phone off me because unfortunately I'm having to do it on the phone rather than the laptop. And he's going to set us up on the new fandangled equipment. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone that paid forward for us to use it. Um, um, absolutely. Hopefully, hopefully our sound and our production should be much better because we've got the use of it. We're so excited playing with it. It's wonderful. But well, I'll be a bit more stable in a minute. <laughs> I felt as if I was wobbling. Getting, while Marianne is getting a bit more stable, let me tell you a story. <laughs> um, at the last live that we did, Marianne was, I think, between five and 600 subscribers. And then it went up a bit. And a few weeks, well, last week, I think it was, they had reached the 4,000 watch hours that you need for monetization. And they had, I think if it was right, 929, possibly 39, but it was nine something nine. And 29, you're right, yes. Yeah. So she had 929 subscribers. And she's been doing this Christmas secret thing. She's been a secret squirrel that you will find out soon. And she's been speaking to various um, other YouTubers. And Jesse, who is watching, Hello, Tessie. Oh, yes, you're getting shouted out, Tessie. I'm just going to tell it as it is. <laughs> Tessie a shout out to her subscribers. Now, Tessie has a huge lot more subscribers than us because Tessie has been doing this for a whole lot longer and has Not a family longer. channel. So say hello to Tessie. And Tessie put a shout out. And I went to bed when Marianne had 929 subscribers. I got up the next morning. Can I just interject? Can I just interject? Um, Karen actually put a shout out on her channel for me way before we become friends, um, way before we built this connection. Um, and Karen actually saw a potato harvest of mine, um, the last one of the year. Now, I'm not sure was it the end of October or the beginning of November. Such a lot has happened since then. It, oh, it seems like a long time ago. Uh, but Karen actually put a shout out for me on her community page. Um, something along the lines, I'm so jealous of wallflowers getting a harvest this time of year. Um, I started noticing I started noticing people coming along and subs and subs. Um, and I went from, uh, we went from um, the 500 mark or might have been even the 300 mark at that stage, 300 mark to over the 500 mark. Um, I thanked Karen, and slowly but surely we started talking to each other. And as well, you know I'm now, we're, we're made, away with the mixers now, we're the best of friends <laughs> now. So. <laughs> I've just had someone say, there, who's the lady in the Christmas jumper? So for anyone who's just joined us or joined us recently, while well, we've been napping, as we do, uh, this is Mary Ann from Wallflowers UK. And as you just heard Mary Ann say, we started talking a few months ago. But as I was about to finish the, the, the story, we've built up and built up. And as I say, Tessie put a shout out for Mary Ann. And I had gone to bed when Mary Ann had 99 subscribers. I woke up at 1,500 subscribers going, oh my God, look, you've got 1,500 subscribers. How did you manage that? And she's like, no, come on now, be honest. Tell everyone what you said to me. I don't know. Be honest. 
So I get a message from from Karen through my Facebook Messenger. Um, I hope you haven't done anything silly. Uh, I thought, oh, she went, uh, you you haven't tried to buy bots, have you, to try to improve your page? <laughs> because we've got that kind of friendship going now that we can tease each other you know oh. she said I, I hope you haven't purchased bots i said i certainly have not <laughs> being all holy of the <laughs> man. I, not. I said uh, my beautiful friend tessie's put a shout out for yeah. me on her and page then, and then i went to work <laughs> and by the time i got myself settled at work it was up at three thousand. So, Tessie, thank you so much. That was so kind of you, and I know how much Marianne appreci appreciates it. But also, can't, where, we're, where we're going with this whole conversation is, if you watch my channel, you will know that we donate. We got monetized. I got a fright and went, oh, my goodness, I need to do something with this. So, Marianne here, she was so close to getting monetized, and she put the buy me a coffee thing. I don't understand it, but it's buy me a coffee and you can put some money on. So she got some money. Oh, Anne, thank you so much. I didn't know you could do that. Um, Anne's thank just you, Anne. Um, that's absolutely beautiful of you. Thank you. Was that a super chat thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I did not know I had them. Um, but yeah, so Mary Ann got some money on this buy me a coffee. And I think at the last count, when she'd said she had some some cash, and it was, um, you know, we've made like £140. So £20 of it is going to the microphone. And then last night's video was this whole spread of stuff because Mary Ann went shopping. Now, I have to with, say... With the channel's money. With the channel's money, yeah. She went shopping, she got gloves, hats, smellies, she checked with the food bank people what they needed for the kids and they said you know teenagers we need this and um, i have to say i i hate shopping as i said earlier or before we switched over to this channel patrick suggested we went to the shops at stay o'clock today <laughs> no so marianne i have to say i'm so immensely chuffed with you that you went to the shops and actually got stuff i can well, do, do you know what I do you know what actually happened? Um, in the end, we had two hundred pounds to spend on them um, because the coffees still kept coming in. Um, because I'd mentioned we were buying the um, the children some toys, I thought at that stage we were going to be donating it to to younger children. Um, and then obviously the lady Margaret there at the food bank said, "Teenagers, thank you so much. That's wonderful." And Fern, that's absolutely yeah. beautiful of you all. Tessie, <coughs> uh, thank you so much. I did not know that was possible. So we went shopping. Our, our local shopping centre is called a concourse. I think that uh -huh. just means shopping centre. Um, and we, we started looking. So first of all, we went to what we presumed would be the cheapest shop, Poundland. Yeah. Um, because we wanted to bulk buy and get as many as we could. Mm -hmm. So we started looking at the um the brand name as link sets. So oh, we yeah. started looking at those first to, to get a set of some sort. So it looked, you know, looks something biggish in the gifts and it was a toiletry toiletry set what they need. So in the pound shop, they were three pounds fifty each. So oh serio. Thank you so much on Karen's Thank behalf. You so Thank you so much. Hi, oh, Heather. Hey, good to see you. Although you're just back from work, you poor soul. So we bought so many in that store, and then we went to another store, and they the exactly the same set was three pounds each. So had we known, we would have saved fifty pence on the original sets that we bought, which would have got yeah. us one or two more sets. So it would have been one or two more children provided for. Yeah. We then went on to another shop and they were down to two ninety nine. But of course, we'd already bought everything by then, you know. Yeah. So 
if we'd have had time and if we were supermarket shoppers, we might have been able to familiarise ourselves with what it was. But because we don't do the supermarkets at all and had only gone there to do this shop, we'd yeah. fell in we'd fell into the trick, you know. Well, that's it. And I mean, you know, I basically do not I mean, I don't know how many times I have to say it. I do not do shopping. I hate shopping with a vengeance. The cheaper shops aren't always the cheaper shops. No, but for me, uh, can you see see me going into Tesco's or Little's on a Saturday morning? Um, that they're on the outskirts of Perth. They're on my way home. Well, Little's isn't particularly, but Tesco certainly is. So even if I if I'm at home, if I want to go to the supermarket, I go to Tesco's. It's on the outskirts. I don't have to go in the middle of town. But the middle of town, if I if I want Poundland, if I want boots if I want super drug if I want any of them I have got to go right into the centre of town I've got to park up I've got to trudge through the streets no and certainly not the week before Christmas it's my daughter would be like mummy no you're going to kill someone so just you stay at home so I think my daughter's advice what can I say Crazy, because Mr. Wallflowers drives about up in other areas whilst he's working. I'll leave a little list and say, you know, I say a little list. It's normally one item every three months or so. You know, it's not really that often. But I'll say we specifically need this. And, you know, I, I don't go to supermarkets. I go shopping twice a week, but it is only to pantries. It is only to food initiatives. We don't shop in supermarkets at all unless it's for specifics. Um, whilst we were getting the Christmas gifts for the children, I took advantage <clears throat> of that Shut time and, and bought my coffee uh, whilst we were out. So this time I bought five jars of coffee. So I'm stocked up for about two months now, at least, maybe three. Quite right. Oh, Chat Chat Thank you. you have a star of epic proportions, sweetie. Thank you very, very much. Can I just go back to um, when we were talking about Tessie a moment ago? Yeah. Um, and obviously she, she knows my deep, deep gratitude, um, not only for um, the publication and the promotion of the Wallflowers channel, but because of this community that we have and our friendship, which is the first and foremost thing in my mind, although I'm so appreciative of the channel becoming bigger and more subs and more friends with us and the community aspect of that is wonderful but the community between ourselves means such a lot to me it really means so much to me but I have to say and I don't mean this on a uh, selfish tangent or anything like that I didn't do a video yesterday and I haven't done a video today, knowing that we're doing the live this evening. But yesterday, um, I had to do shopping in the morning. I go to the pantry. And when I came home, I was so exhausted. I really just had to sleep. Um, not because we've, we've got a lot on our mind with the energy crisis, with finances and making them stretch. Um, but I've gone through such highs as well with the emotion of what yourself's done, what Tessie's done for me, uh, for us, for our community. And I've I've gone from, if you look at my videos, one day I'm crying because of the deprivation and the lack of funds to the next yeah. day I'm absolutely floating on air because of the love and the community and the respect. And I, I, I've gone through such emotions. Our bodies have just been absolutely shattered and we, we slept for so many hours yesterday. Mr. Wallflowers was the same after work. And unfortunately, we, we didn't get up to make a video. Um, and in the evening last night, Karen, as you know, um, my friends and I, Carol, went and did um, some work in the pantry. It was only like, and, sorry, in the food bank. It was only light work. Um, if I can just share a little story with you. Some of the local people who work for the council, not the councillors, the actual council workers, 
<clears throat> had all gone in and offered some of their time to the food bank to pack bags to get ready to issue to people um, as part of their Christmas food donation from the food bank. And because there's so many using the facility at the moment, it's increasing on a daily basis. There's so many people making their finances stretch that the more and more yeah. dependent on places like the food bank. As you say, not you know, it, it's nowhere near just people on on um benefits. It's workers, it's doctors, it's ambulance drivers, it's it's all of us, you know. Um the, there's so many walks of life actually using the food bank at the moment that they're actually stretched to capacity, you know. So yeah. there was some of these, there were some of these council people that work for the council that have offered their time and dedicated their time to pack some bags off for them, you know, to put tins, packets, boxes and mince pies and to form these bags to be given. Unfortunately, because they hadn't been familiar with the food bank setup, um, there are some out of date food that's available for people to purchase because it's not given. When when you get a bag of food from the food bank, they don't give you out of date food. They give you in date food, and everything that you get is quality food that you receive from them. But there are shelving within the food banks where you can purchase out of best before dates. It's good food, it's food that I eat on a regular basis that I'm quite happy with. It's not for everyone, but I personally don't have an issue with it. You know, with foods jarred, canned, whatever, it'll last beyond its best before date. And these councillors had all good intentions, the hearts were in the right place, and they packed these bags, and there was a lot of over best before dates in them. So Carol and I went in this into this room last night, and our job was to sort out and take out things that had gone past the best before dates and to replace them with with good things in date. So we did approximately three hours. We had our own table. We could sit down, but we could do it, you know. Um, we felt useful. We felt we, we'd made our, our contribution. We had a bit of music on in the background and a giggle. Uh, we enjoyed it, you know. I just thought I'd share that with you. No, and it is, it's, it's one of those things where some people's perception of what happens in food banks is one way and some people's is another. And it's nice to know that, you know, there were so many of those council people there helping. Yeah, and, yeah, wonderful. You know, yeah. But obviously they, they'd not had much experience with it because normally it's not something that the council puts their staff to. Yeah. So... You know, it's it's one of those things. What's what's down in saying that some of the food bank users are now complaining about being given tinned food products. Do you know what I have to say? I've seen this in a few places. And there's two ways of looking at this. People are saying, I can't have the tinned products. And depending on how you look at it, you're like, yeah, some people are saying, and you're like, well, do you know, choosing beggar or something. But then there's other places, or there's other people who look at it, and some of the food bank users have explained and said, I can't heat it. I can't cook yeah. it. If it's stuff that needs cooked, I can't cook it. Um, yeah. There's been a few reports I've seen from various food banks where they're like, people are stopping taking fresh fruit and veg, or fresh veg, because they can't boil the potatoes. They can't cook them. And I think for some food banks, that's actually becoming quite a difficult thing. And that's it why is, I'm quite can I... Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Can I just expand on that? Because there are different sections of food banks and charity based on that. And one of the sections is relieving um, homeless people from the streets and rehousing them and getting them in a sheltered home situation, whether it's individual flats or if it's a family, a house, and setting them up and getting them sometimes they don't have a cooker sometimes people won't use a microwave or haven't got a microwave microwave available to them to use so the standard thing that those people normally have that's either been donated to them or they will have is a kettle so the issue and the best donations for those kind of places will be your cup of soups your noodle packets um oxo cubes to make a drink with or you know anything that you can just simply add boiled water to to create a meal 
and yeah. you'll find that more and more now in the food bank situation because most of the time people I'm speaking generically now because I can't go into individual stories yeah. but most of the time there was a difference between a homeless scenario and a family food bank scenario if you if you can get what I'm meaning so in the general food bank scenario most people would have a home um, with all the belongings in and that includes a cooker and a washing machine etc just unfortunately they can't afford to use them because of the fuel prices more than ever complete change of subject have you seen What's His Face's government video with the elf on the shelf? Grant Shapps. I, d- I don't know what you mean, hon. Okay. So, you know how um, <clears throat> the government is like, we're helping you pay for energy, and really you just need to get through it. Yeah? <laughs> it's easier said than done. And exactly. uh, Let's look at it. They're only helping. We're still having to put additional yeah. costs to it. But seemingly... Liz Truss had said they would put out a public announce, you know, public information, you know, like for people, for ladies of a certain age in the UK, um, people who did the, um, you know, Charlie Says yeah, video. Yeah. Um, so Liz Truss had said she was going to spend 15 million in that. And then initially it was like, no, they're not going to. But now they are going to. And he's just put out this video. You can see it on YouTube. I was mortified, I have to say. Just slightly expand. What fifty million, Karen? Fifteen. That was what, what they were going to spend on a public information film or public information announcements for the public to show them how to save energy. So you have that. <laughs> like, bear with me on this one. It drives me insane. Grant Shapps in his house with the oh, I'm sure I switched that off. I'm switching off a socket at the wall. And the wee elf on the shelf going, hee, 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 hee. oh, I thought I had turned my boiler flow rate down to 60 instead of 80. And the wee elf going, hee, 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 hee. and it's Grant Shapps saying, this is how we can save, you know, and the elf is, he threw, throws the elf out and says, you know, it's so easy to save. And even the draft excluder on the door, I'm like, really? This is what you've spent 15 million on. This stupid on the video. Basic information that people already know <laughs> that it's a survival tactic. We have had forever. Those are basic survival tactics, aren't they? There's nothing enhancing our knowledge there to save fair the money, is there? Or fuel, or energy, or heat. Exactly. Yes, so this is the stuff that I don't know how long ago you started talking about that, but I started talking about it, and oh my goodness, this is them just going with the absolute basics of switch your sockets off at the wall, use a draft excluder, and that's it. I don't know about you, but I've been using draft excluders for about 15 years come winter, at least. Exactly. And I mean, you know, one of the first things that, that we talk about as soon as the weather starts to turn is hot water bottles, blankies, and if you don't have a draft excluder, get a pair of leggings or a pair of tights, roll up a towel, and put that in. And there's your draft okay. excluder. It doesn't need to be a pretty fluffy dog, or I think in our area, it's, a, oh, I saw one in the local gift shop. It was like £40 for a draft excluder because it was Scottish tweed. Really? Give me a pair of legs and a up towel any day. I mean, quite a few years ago, my um, youngest son, as I say, he's 19 on the 23rd of this month. Um, quite a few years ago, at, say he was about 12, 13. That's how long ago it was. Um, he'd grown out of yet another pair of jeans, another pair of trousers. So I cut one leg, one leg off completely at the crotch and had a full leg. I stuffed yeah. it with newspapers and I put two elastic bands around either end like a giant cracker. Yeah. That's it. 
this is this is seemingly the UK government's information to help us um, save I can money. Understand on people who got nicer homes. I can understand people might see something like that as a nice so because we all live different lifestyles. I can see that, but it takes two minutes with a bit of glue or something to fold the edge in, make it neat and tidy, and it's oh. no different. If you want to embellish it, you embellish it at your home, you know. But they're so, so simple like to make. Someone had just um, said, Maryland 21, the bubble wrap on the windows. Now, I had read about that for years, and I didn't need to do it. My electricity wasn't too bad. But recently, mm -hmm, even after removing storage heaters, because my house is all electric, it's it's not to you know I had to come off the total heating with total control rate. It was dreadful, um, and the bubble wrap on the windows when I first did it in the kitchen in the back door, walking from my sitting room into my kitchen to go and put the kettle it's on. And I was like, do you know I was actually waiting for the the heat to hit me, and it didn't. Well, the cold to hit me, and it was the cold didn't hit me, and I was like, oh my goodness, and that's when I decided to be, you know, I need to put this in the channel. Definitely. I was so glad when you did. I've done bubble wrap on the lounge window, um, two hallway windows, one at the top of the stairs, one at the bottom. Um, and I've, I've done that for three years now, including this year. So that's three years I've done it. And the difference is a big difference, you know. But on top of that, we're still getting colder. So we're still colder within the room. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Uh, the heating, you know, I've not changed the temperature on the heating. And the heating doesn't seem to be as much as it used to be. Sometimes we used to be able to put the heating on and we'd be taking the sweatshirts off and we'd be hot with it on even in the winter. We're not doing that now. We're still needing the sweatshirt on with the heating on. You know, that's what I'm noticing now. But I just want to go that step further again. Um, there are some people now that are using that cardboard or going into shops and asking for cardboard and actually standing that up in the bathroom window and using it as a shield in the bathroom window. I may come from a lower budget angle because that's the community I'm living in and that's where I'm at and that's what I'm seeing more on a regular basis. Um, but even if you've got money, it's still not stretching that far. So these lower budget tips are for everyone anyway, you know. But um, a bathroom we're all using daily. But yeah. if we're keeping our, if we're keeping our curtains shut when the sun's not shining, that can be a large part of the day. So I'm up generally eight o'clock of the morning. I'm no earlier than that. Um, and come. Just after 10, I'm finding the sun's coming through. So I'll open the windows then for that small bit of heat coming from the sun and that daylight. And I'm finding by mid-afternoon, early mid-afternoon, I'm already closing my curtains to keep the heat in. Yeah. <clears throat> I have a roller blind on my bathroom window. Mm -hmm. And the draft comes through the sides. It doesn't come through the bottom. It can come through the top and it comes through the sides because the roller, blade, the roller blind only touches so far. So I haven't gone to the stage where I've put cardboard in behind the roller blind, but that's what a lot of people are doing. I'm seeing that in my local area. But what I've done is I've taken a duvet cover, um, yeah. just the cover itself, and I've hung that around the roller blind. And then our bath, is right up against the window so we have the window we have the bath and then I'm keeping the shower curtain shut yeah. now I never I never used to close my shower curtain because I liked the aesthetic of being able to see my window edge and mm. um, it was you know I just liked it looking that way now it's not about how I like it looking it's got to be practical for the heat so I have a duvet over that roller blind. We can take it off when we shower. We can take it off when we bath. And then we place it back on again. And it just keeps that draft out. And I'm not opening my roller blind during the day. I'm literally yeah. keeping that bathroom one closed all the time at the moment. And then I'm pulling the shower curtain across. So in effect, I've got near enough three layers there, really, keeping the draft out for the bathroom. And I remember being a young girl being at home with mum and dad 
and to be asked to go and make a cup of tea in the winter and sent out in the kitchen because they weren't going to move and I was sent out to make the brew, you know. And it almost felt like oh, a yeah, punishment. Done that one. The kitchen, we all did it, you know, and it, it, the kitchen was the coldest room in the house, you know, for some reason, I don't know. Well, it doesn't work like that in this house. For some reason, our bathroom is the coldest room <laughs> in the house. And when you've got to go, you've got to go, you know. And um, going up there, you think, oh, <laughs> and even with them three layers of protection, it's still ice cold. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know that I put out the video about the the actual difference it makes with no heating in the house. Because yeah, yeah. there was a time just last month where there was no heating in the house apart from the wood burner. And because I'm out the house from half past seven in the morning until half past five at night, and then I was coming through to Patrick's on a Saturday night. So it was a lot of times the house had no heat. The wood burner was only on if I was in the house. And then the temperature dropped a bit. And I, I had to message Patrick. I didn't even wait for him coming through. It's like, babe, I need you to put a, a panel heater in the front hall and I need it now. And thankfully, he's an electrician, so he can do such things. And we've got just a panel heater that sits. I think it's a... If I'm in, the average temperature is like 15, and if I'm away, you know, you can set the thing to come on at certain hours, and it comes. I think it sits at 13 when I'm not there, and it's just a case of my pipes are safe. Yeah, yeah, that's the biggest <laughs> issue. <clears throat> well, lady, lady, another channel, um, frugal visit, Lizzie B. Um, She's with us for our Christmas project um, and she literally, um, I think it was yesterday or the day before, had a burst pipe. She hasn't been able to produce videos now for two days because she's frantic. She's had to leave the home and go and live with her father yeah. um, and she's suffering now through a burst pipe situation. It's more and more common. You know, my friend no. Carol had exactly the same issue happen, you know, and what what we're finding now is back to the finance situation side of it. I don't know uh, Frugal Lizzie B's situation. I can only refer to my friend and other people I'm familiar with here. Um, you can pay your insurance policy. You can pay for years and years and years for your house contents. But you have a disaster like a burst pipe or damage to your structure because of these burst pipes in these elements that we're suffering now because we can't afford to put the heat on. We're in a quandary, you know, we're stuck, you know, you're bad if you do, you're bad if you don't. You can't win, you know, but anyway, people can't afford to pay the excess. So when you go to claim on your insurance to help you with a burst pipe, to help you with any damage caused, you have to pay what's called an excess. And on most things, it can be from £250 to £450. Now, if you can't afford to use your heating and you're struggling to provide food to feed your family, you certainly haven't got the finances to extend to £450 to fix a burst pipe. That wouldn't have happened if you were able to use your heating in the first place. Exactly. Hang on. Let me just see. Lisa just said the questions from both of you and I can't find it. Would it help if we put silicon around the seals of the windows to stop the draft? Patrick? I was just wondering what you opened, though. Yeah. Depends on the windows as well. Depending on the windows, but yes, if there's... Um, I know that in Poland they use expanding foam around the the seal of... Not, not the OP closey bit, but where they put the windows into your building in Poland they seal it with expanding foam which we don't do here I just know that boss man said that was a bit confusing to him at well, first we, we can use the white or the clear silicon yeah. and that does work I've done that personally but to go that one step further in the openly closey thing and I've discussed it on one of my videos previously because it's something I actually do so over the years when we've had things go to the outside, whether it be Christmas lights on fences, whether it be something, whatever, and you have a wire and then you close the window, gradually you, you're causing a gap in your open shutty part of your window. And it happens. It happens over the years. It's just general wear and tear. 
So I found even with the windows tightly closed, there were still drafts coming through the open parts. Yeah. And when the weather's bitter like this, it's a problem. So on my poorer end of the budget, trying to do things easily, it probably can be done much better, but I'll just explain how I've done it. I take um, the thinnest um, carrier bags that you can get, shopping bags, and I twist them. I open the window and I actually shove it into the side part, making sure there's none leaking over to the inside of the house. Of course, it doesn't matter how it looks from the outside. And I do that all the way around the window and then close it tightly. Now that's sealing all the drafts from any any lumps and bumps in the in the in the open and shutty part. And yeah. with it being plastic. There's no water seeping into the house because it'll trail off any plastic that falls off the edge. I hope that makes sense. And it does work. You know, it really does work. Three, four carrier bags around the inner of a window prevents all that draft and keeps your heat in much better. Does that make sense? Does that make sense, Kevin? No, yeah, no, sorry. Someone just <laughs> said whack a fool. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, where are they? Because I don't know. Patrick's asking, watch out for condensation for that one, just with it being plastic. I appreciate that, but it, it works. For some reason, we haven't had any condensation. I don't know whether it's um, the type of plastic for a carrier bag, because, of course, you have different strengths of plastic. Now, I don't know if that's breathable plastic. I'm not sure, but it works, and we haven't had any. You know, because as, as as plastic gets firmer, it has a different title. Oh, I can't think what they're called. They go up in PC something, don't they? The harder strengths of plastics. So when they come to go in the landfill, a different waste yeah. container. But for some reason, those really thin carrier bags, they, they don't seem to be causing any. That was something I did look out for because I didn't want to cause any damage. Yeah. Um, just for something that um, <clears throat> they're talking about, when we're talking about the burst pipes, if, if you've seen about the burst pipes in London today. No, I, I don't watch TV or read right, the media that way. Huge burst pipe in London. Now, they said it was a 43-inch diameter pipe. So I'm thinking, well, that's certainly not mine. So I've got, I, I got the tape measure, right? And... Yeah. Hold it lengthways, Pam. Hold it lengthways. It's still too big. Wow. That's the diameter of that pipe. Now, I know I was young when it got privatised, but I distinctly remember the whole point of privatisation was the government saying, we do not have the money for the interest, infrastructure improvements that are required. It's only the private businesses that can do that. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean a 43 inch diameter water pipe, surely the big pipes, like yon big, are the ones that you keep an eye on. There's like oh, 100 out of the homes. And the insurance, that's going to be a laugh. You know, when you come to budgeting, when you do your own personal finances, you're advised to chip away at the biggest step first. So if you're coming to do insurance and you're coming to do repairs, wouldn't you go to the most high risk first? Isn't it common sense? Of course it is. So, yes, that is that is the thing. Um, but, you know, what can I say? It is what it is, but that is there's hundreds of people now. Uh, at one point, the fire, firemen said they were chest deep in water. And where is it? In London. Where was it? Camden. It's Camden, yeah. And what kind of setup is it? Is it in the community? Is it? I don't know. Um, I don't know what sort Peckham, of set. It was Peckham Way, according to him. Um, mm. But yeah, it it just. But it's like. You know, these, these companies who are making multi-million pounds of profit and all of a sudden hundreds of households are out in the street the week before Christmas because they haven't maintained the pipes. And, and they'll, again, conven they'll conveniently have to be rehomed out on the outskirts and the 
in the less affluent areas. Yeah, exactly. We're losing sound on and off. I would think that's because my phone is on its last legs. Oh, I'm just hoping I'm not too far. I'm not sure. Where... Can you hear me clearly? Where's my microwave that... microphone gone, Brian? Oh, right. So we're not using the new one. Okay, I'm dependent on the phone one, apparently. I didn't even notice. Is my volume okay, Karen? You're fine to me, but some of them have been saying that there's a, a bit of um, pro problems with the sound. Um, it keeps cutting out. Um, I don't know what we're doing with that, but Tanette says we're sounding fine. So fingers crossed. I think, to be honest, I've probably got about 10 minutes left in this phone before it dies. Um, right. So, but I have to say, who was it that said, um, Chatterbox, our water system is still running on Victorian pipes. How true you are. Just, you know, those pipes have not been renewed. That was supposed to be what the privatisation was about. And it's not been done. And yeah, there you go. Chantel, a 42-inch water main burst overnight and unleashed half a metre of flooding across an area of around 800 metres. Eight fire engines and around 60 firefighters were called to Belsize Road in Camden at 3 a.m. in the morning. Oh. It doesn't bear it, does it? No, and I mean, I, we do a lot of insurance work as part of our job, and water damage is the worst. You know, it, it just goes everywhere. And there's not a lot you can do about it because it just, you know, it kills your plasterboard, it kills your wood. Um, and it, See, on a grand scale like that, I wouldn't know how to do with it. And as you say, on the on the bigger company scales, but with my friend, um, it's a much smaller scale just in, in her living room, lounge. Um and she used every towel, every dressing gown, every piece of material she had to try and mop up the mess, you know, the water there. And, of course, she couldn't use electricity. She couldn't use a water to wash them. So then she come to us as friends to get them done. But if she didn't have anyone to reach out to, how would she have cleaned all that mess up? It's the repercussions of cleaning the mess up, isn't it, and fixing things? Oh, yeah. Um, and I mean, you know, as I say, we do a lot of insurance work and we're expecting a lot of calls next week because we were, I think, minus seven the first cold day. It hit minus 10 the second and then it was minus four, I think, Thursday and minus two yesterday. So when we had the snow, the pretty lovely video that I put out with the snow, that was sitting on top of ice. And that's why I then put the video out of the A9 being backed up because people were thinking, oh, the snow's clearing if we just drive on it, but it was ice underneath. And if you don't have winter tyres on that, it's just not happening. Terrific. Yeah, it's beautiful to see on a postcard. It's beautiful to see on a video and a picture, so long as you're wrapped up at home looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's exactly it. It's like, yeah, no, locally, locally, when you feel the cold or um, things like that, we call people Nesh. So I, if I say to Mr. Wolf, I was, oh, I'm feeling cold, he'll go, you Nesh, you. And we call it <laughs> Nesh. And that's a, a one we use. Do you yeah. have a word that, that's for that? Baltic. Baltic, yeah. yeah, basically, like it's Baltic and Baltic. The world <laughs> Baltic. Her neck has to put up next Friday, she's supposed to get minus 14. Tonight, you have my sympathies because minus 14 is lovely. Kareno said it took someone to we're expecting minus 10, aren't we? Yeah, something like that. And Kareno's just said it took someone. 14 hours to get from Edinburgh to Oban yesterday. Normally a two and a half hour journey. Now, I have to say, Kareno, I would normally not be saying Edinburgh to Oban is a two and a half hour journey because Edinburgh to me is one hour. 
Um, so I would say it's still probably two hours from me to Oban. So yeah, Gina, hi there in Sweden. Yay. Um, Julie? Just missed the lady's name. Um, Julie. Um, that's why we've been trying to say, and I think we've both said it on both channels quite a few times, we don't necessarily like the carton milk, the UHT. We, I personally wouldn't buy it on a regular basis. But for these instances, I've been collecting a few and putting them to the side because there are good forward dates on them, aren't there, Karen? Oh, um, and, and to have a few of them, you know, one or two is an absolute bonus. But if you can put six or eight of them to a side, gradually buying them one at a time, you've got that to cover a decent period of time, not being able to get that milk, you know, and um, possibly some crackers yeah. in, um, well, possibly the, something up. As, as Patrick's just said, I get UHT skimmed. I don't yeah, get yeah. the skimmed or the full. And in tea and coffee, you don't notice the difference in flavour. He always did, and, and then he didn't realise I'd actually used it, but it's only the skimmed, because the mm -hmm. fat content and the semi-skimmed and the full fat is what gives it the weird taste. So if oh, you use right. the UHT full skimmed, it doesn't have nearly as much as a flavour as the other ones. Oh, I've got half and half. I just take what's available at the pantry to me. And sometimes yeah. it's semi-skimmed and sometimes it's fully skimmed. And as you say, beggars can't be choosers, so we take what's available. Um, and I've only opened the semi-skimmed so far because in regards to normal milk, fully skimmed isn't enough for me because I'm a full-fat milk drinker. Yeah. So that's a really good tip and that's useful for me to know. So I'll open the fully fully skimmed next and and yeah. some that one for your tea and coffee. I mean, it, it would be awful in cereal or something, but for tea and coffee, it's absolutely fine. Um, and I have mm. to say, today when I came in, I were like, is it tea tech? No. So we'll have snackies. And Patrick, because he's lived in London for so long, it's very much a nips up to the shops and gets what he wants and then nips back again. <laughs> Oh, yeah. me, who is three miles to the nearest shop and 10 miles to the nearest supermarket. So this afternoon, um, just after five, when we did go to the shops, I now have, for no other reason than, if the weather turns bad again and I'm here, I want snacky bits. So he now has crisps and biscuits and loads and loads of unhealthy stuff. Yeah, so yeah, we have to. If it's horrible weather, I do not need to go out to get something. You know, Do you know what he just had the audacity to say? He stretched his arms and went, oh, it's snowing, give me a big bar of chocolate. Yes, if it is to put snow <laughs> outside my door, I will be eating a bar of chocolate rather than trying to go through the shops. Bless. And why not? And why not? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a chocolate eater. I love my chocolate. I really do. Um, Mr. Wallflowers likes uh, a packet of crisp. He's more yeah. savoury. He'll, he'll have um, a dip and crackers. You know, he's much more savoury than I am. I have a really sweet tooth and I want something sugary. If I have something savoury, it's got to be highly salted. And I suppose that's the same sweetness thing I'm looking for, isn't it? Exactly. Now, Mary, that's just been on an hour and a half and my phone has just gone, I have 5% batter. Well, can we just do closing questions and see if anyone's got any last questions, any yep. last things they want to say to us then? Two minutes. Brian Wall, where is Mr. Wallflowers? I thought he was a cameraman. <laughs> no, it's on the stand. <laughs> I'm redundant. Oh, he, he's my, he, he wants to be the makeup artist now, but do I or don't I? <laughs> you don't need it, Marianne. Don't be silly. <laughs> but yeah, so what I will say is thank you so much, everyone, for joining us here tonight. It has been a laugh and a half. If we don't see you before, I hope you all have a great Christmas. But obviously, we'll be putting up some videos. There could possibly be another live. Oh, when's their Christmas party? Um, keep an eye out 
I will be, I, I'm just going to invent that right now, Chatterbox, but just not quite immediately. Come back tomorrow and I will have thought of the Christmas party. <laughs> oh, lovely. Looking forward to that. <laughs> I'd just like to say exactly what Karen said. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. Uh, we look forward to the next. In the meantime, everyone have a fabulous Christmas. No matter how much or how little we've got, we've got each other. And let's just make the most of it. Exactly. So thank you, guys. I will love you and leave you. And we will speak to you later. Bye. Thank you for as always. Bye, Kevin. Bye, Patrick. Bye. Hey. Yay.